What's up guys, today we got a little bit of different kind of video. We are gonna check out the XFI MZ1, which is the Rocket Jump Ninja Mouse. I'm gonna tell you what I expect from it performance wise, and then we're gonna talk about the shape, and of course the tech specs. It's gonna be a quick video, so let's get right on it. So yeah, the mouse is called the XFI MZ1, size rail. I'm not a massive fan of the name, but I really don't care about it either way. It's designed by Rocket Jump Ninja, has unique shape, ultralight construction, 3389 sensor. Looking at the shape, it sort of does look like it's in between of Extra Fire M42, the Jewels HSK, and the Razor Abysses. It has these quite large comfort grooves. If you have watched RGN's reviews, we all know that he loves these comfort grooves. The design is a little bit different from standard extra fire design as it's, as it's not completely covered with holes. Like under the side buttons there are no holes, and then on the shell, back top shell there are some places where there are no holes. It sort of does look like an ambidextrous mouse, but the Rocket Jump Ninja did confirm that the sides are not symmetrical. And when you look at these pictures closely, you can clearly see that they are not the same. The mouse feet design is interesting, there is a small large feet on the front and two smaller feet at the back. From the back it does look like an HSK, and from the front it does look a sort of like the extra fine 42 and it's quite close to that razor up bushes shape. You can clearly see that it's mostly meant for fingertip grip, but if you can plant your palm in this part of the mouse, this is usually should be clawable even. For example, if you've seen my HSK review, I showed you how I claw grip that mouse, and it should be much easier to claw grip this mouse that way. Here you can clearly see the comfort grooves, and it does look like they sort of continue onto the shell, but this might be just a reflection. But there are massive curves on the buttons. I will show you some parts of the release video without audio, because there is some uh, parts where they show the shape. The buttons seem translucent, and there is this nice RGB that's quite well known from the extra fire mice. So yeah, it, uh, it does look like it's... It doesn't look that low profile, but it definitely is not high profile. The hump is very aggressive, so this could be that you can claw grip this mouse, depending on your hand size, of course. But, sti but still, it will mainly be for the fingertip grip. Yeah, okay, there is not too much to go through in this video, but... Yeah, the mouse looks interesting. Not really sure what to t think about it yet, though. So some filler text for the website, we don't really care about that. A shape you've never seen, to land shots you've never hit. <laughs> don't really agree with that, but the shape does seem very unique to me. Okay, so here are so here are some di so here are some dimensions. So it's 59 millimeters from the front, 52.5 in the middle, and 58.5 in the back. 111 millimeters uh, long, 36.5 millimeters high. So definitely not a high profile mouse. But this still could work for claw grip, but I'm not just quite sure yet. All the extra five mice that I have tried are suited for many grip styles, so I do suspect that this is alright for claw as well. Okay, most of the stuff is just filler text, so let's go through the specs. Okay, so this is the most interesting part, because we can't talk much about the shape, because we need to try it first. But once more, it does seem to be mainly a fingertip grip mouse, but I suspect that you can claw grip it as well. I'm very eager to try it out. I thought that the HSK was very good for micro adjustment with my sort of hybrid claw grip with that mouse because of the size, so this might prove to be very good with those as well. So yeah, it does state that the shape is ergonomic, so the sensor is the 3389 from Pixar, and the implementation on the extra 5 mice has always been very very good. There is basically no smoothing at any of the DPI steps, the motion delays are very small, there is no acceleration, it just feels very responsive in game. The click latency also on these extra 5 mice has been very very top notch. So regarding the tech, you can expect a lot from this mouse. It has the same kind of RGB as the previous Project 4 mice, the weight is 56 grams, excluding the cable, so it could weigh around 60 grams, and it's quite a bit for a small mouse, but I will be able to tell more when I actually hold that one in hand. The dimensions we pretty much already saw, it has the extra fry easy cord, which is basically the same cable as on the M42 and the M4, and it's not nearly the best cable. It's actually quite stiff and quite thick, so many people have had issues with this cable. In my experience, in the end, the cable does not affect my in-game performance at all, so I don't care too much about it, but of course, I would like a more flexible cable. For example, in between reviews, I've been using the M42 without a bungee, and I'm completely fine with that. States here it has PTFE glides, I assume it's pure PTFE. The glide on the M42 feet is good, but they are not the best feet I've ever tried. I suspect these feet are much good enough. 
There are no drivers, so you can of course only change through the default DPI steps. I will put the DPI steps of the M42 somewhere here on the screen. And all of the other stuff here is pretty much standard. So in my opinion the success of this mouse will be decided on how versatile the mouse is. For example if it's only good for fingertip grip, I don't think it's gonna be that successful. If it's also good for claw grip, this might be a good product. The price is the thing that scares me here because it's 20 euros more than the M42. The M42 is my favorite mouse by far at the moment and it's because of the shape. It provides a very good value for money in my opinion if you want an FK2 kind of shape that's a very high performer. And because of the M42 shape I can totally live with the cable. In my opinion it's a little bit exaggerated how bad the cable is or how much a cable even matters in terms of in-game performance. I think it's mostly a mental thing. Once you have a good cable handling solution, for example a bungee, tape or whatever, I think almost any cable is pretty much fine. But of course I do still prefer more flexible cables. If you can't live with one of these stiffer cables, I think 80 euros is a little bit of a stretch. But hey, if you want the shape, you have to pay that 80 bucks or 80 euros. So one pretty cool thing that I forgot to mention is that there is some more configuration done on previous extra manuals. So here it mentions that you can adjust the CPI, the polling rate and the lift of distance. And then you can bind the top button to be the F11 click. So basically from here you can choose what you configure. And if you have the switch on the left, which is the RGB, the button, button on the top here controls RGB. So you switch RGB modes with this button. Then of course if you have it on PR you control polling rate, uh, lift of distance you control lift of distance. And if you have it on F F11, then this button works as, as your F11 bind, so you can actually bind some actions for that. But I don't think that's extremely important in game unless, unless you have a grip style like Valorant and CSGO player Brax did have, which is <laughs> quite a funny grip style. That's pretty much it for this video and the extra for MZ1 RGB, which is the Rocket Jump Ninja mouse. I'm pretty excited to try it out. In my opinion, it's super cool to see a mouse reviewer design his own mouse. For myself, I just do hope that I can claw grip the mouse. But that was pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button. And see you in the next one.